What's up, 2K fans? Mr. NBA 2K Highlights on the mic, and welcome to my commentary episode. I have no idea what episode this is because I didn't look on YouTube before, but whatever, because I'm on NBA.com right now, and I have a much awaited my commentary coming today, and it's about the trades. Now, my next my commentary was going to be about NBA 2K16 and some things I think 2K can add to that, but I just have to save that one because this was a huge trade day. Uh, if you watch the stats, 37 players were traded. That is, that that's just, it's shitstorm happened. I don't know what happened. Like, I'm just going to tell you, on trade day, I was sitting down watching Jerry Springer at about 2 o'clock. That's where, that's what time it comes on where I'm at. And, um, I was thinking it was a pretty boring trade day. I had heard that Kevin Garnett got traded to the, um, t or he was going to get traded to the Timberwolves. I saw a rumor about that. But, you know, I wasn't expecting anything to go down because nothing had gone down. It was 2 o'clock. The trade deadline was at 3, and I was just like, oh, I guess nobody really wants to change their teams today. I don't know. Like, at 2.59, shit hit the fan. Like, it got real. I don't know what happened. I was, I was on Facebook at the same time as I was watching Jerry Springer. And uh, as I'm on Facebook, I see one thing. Oh, Kevin Garnett got traded to the Timberwolves. I was like, oh, cool. He's going home. That happened. Then uh, the, I saw another trade. Then I saw another trade. And I was just like, damn, what happened? Like, me and, me and my friend were sitting there texting about it. And it was just like nonstop moves. So uh, today, I'm here to break down the trades. And um, I've been out of town for the last few days. And I'm kind of glad I did because even some more signings happened in that time uh, from the trade so like the dust has been settling a little bit since then so I'm glad I had a few days to just kind of you know sit back and let everything happen instead of releasing it the day after because we've had some big things happen after the trade deadline that are going to affect how the NBA goes. So uh, first off I want to start off by saying this trade deadline has made the NBA 110% more interesting. Anything I've said about any previous teams on my last mock commentary, you can disregard because the landscape has changed. Uh, and that's what you expect with 37 players being traded. So, uh, I'm, you know, I was going to think about an order I should go in, but I couldn't really decide. So I'm just going to go down to one NBA.com has in a trade tracker, and I'm going to give my opinion on the big ones. I'm not going to go down to little smaller players. Some of them I might have a comment about, but I'm going to start off with what they have here. So uh, get ready. And, um, yeah, you know, see the last episode of the New York – Damn, what's it called? Three Kings of New York. If you haven't, I'm sure I'll mention that again at the end of the video. And uh, feel free to leave your thoughts on these trades, uh, winners, losers. I'm going to be discussing that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how long this one is going to be because I kind of have a lot to say. I feel like I have a lot to say anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and start. So the first one I see, it says the Miami Heat acquired Dragic from the Suns in a three-team trade. Now, this was one of those shit hits the fan ceiling or shit hits the fan situations. Like, I really had no clue until, like, two days before the trade deadline, trade deadline that Goran Dragic wanted out for the Suns. And it's because everything seemed to be going so right for the Suns. You know, the Suns had Isaiah Thomas, Eric Bledsoe, and Goran Dragic. And uh, when they signed those three-point guards at the beginning of the season, we were all like, uh, how that, how is that going to work? Why do they have three-point guards? You know, we were all skeptical about it. But, I mean, they've been making it work pretty nicely. You know, they were... Uh, They've been eighth in the West for a long time, but they might have fucked that up, you know, with this trade or whatever. And uh, then I saw a report Goran Dragic started saying he doesn't trust the Suns. He doesn't like his role there. He hates sitting in the corner. And uh, I would have to agree because his numbers are down from last year. You know, he was a 20-point-per-game guy. He was really good. And, uh, you know, when you sign a third point guard, which I don't know why they did that because a point guard isn't what you need when you already have two starting point guards. You don't need to sign, you know, a third one with Isaiah Thomas. So they got rid of both of them now. So they traded Goran Dragic to the Miami. Miami Heat. So the official trade was Gorn and Zorn, which are the two brothers. For the Phoenix Suns, we're going to get Danny Granger, John Salomon, 2017 first round pick, 2019 first round pick, both from the Heat. And uh, in this trade, I was going to say the Heat were the, well, they are the winners. Let's go ahead and establish that because they just got, I, in my opinion, they got Gorn Dragic for free. But what really shocked me here, you know, is a few days later, Chris Boss gets these random um, blood clots on his lungs. And uh, shout out to Chris Bosh. I hope he's doing all right as a person. You know, that's big, that's bigger than basketball because we don't need nobody dead at like the age of, what is he, like 30? So he's a young man, you know. It's going to take six months of lowered physical activity for him to get right. So right now we're not even worried about him getting back to the court. But I will say, you know, I was heartbroken about that because aside from being a Celtic fan, I'm an NBA fan, period. I like to see good competition. And I was hyped when the Miami Heat got going tragic because in my mind, when they got going tragic from the Suns and I saw that trade, this was uh, prior to Chris Bosh getting hurt. I was like, oh, man, I, I didn't think the Miami Heat were actually contenders because I just don't think anybody's going to beat the Cavs this year. But I thought they were they put their name in that uh, in the ring with all the great Eastern teams. Well, I don't know if you want to use that word, but you talk about the teams like the Hawks and all them. I thought they put their name in there now because previously you just had Wade Bosch and then you could say Hassan Whiteside. 
you add Goran Dragic to that mix, and it's perfect because he gets to be the point guard that he wants to. And the Heat need that type of point guard. They need the point guard who can pass really nicely but can also score a lot too because Mario Chalmers isn't super um, – dependable on scoring really he's a good three-point shooter but he's not good as he's not as good as Goran Dragic so I definitely thought they won that but now they have a situation where Chris Bosh is now down with the blood clots in his lungs we don't know even if he's going to be back for the start of next season because this is a real serious medical condition he has and the way this really changes things is that we don't know if the Miami Heat are going to want to keep or if Goran Dragic is going to want to stay in Miami. Now, granted, it is Miami. I don't know if I was a basketball player, I would want to play in Miami. I've been to Miami before. And I'm going to say right now, I have no clue like where else in the world you would want, you would want to be rich at. Like I would want to stay in Miami. So the city is definitely a draw to him. But I don't know how uh, how much winning is important to him because we don't know when Bosch is going to be back. And if he got, when he comes back, we don't know if he's going to be the same because this six months of uh, rest and physical activity, you just never know. This is a really, really serious condition he has. And uh, that's why I'm more worried about him as a person. So, uh, But Goran Dragic can choose to walk away this summer. Now, do I think he's going to walk away? I don't 100% know because I do know that the Miami Heat were one of the teams that he wanted to play for. He had like them, New York, L.A. So he's a he's obviously a big market guy, a nightlife guy more than likely. And uh, he's going to love it in Miami because I've been to Miami. And uh, that's where I want to move to. Like when I get my own spot, you know, I'm done with college. I ultimately want to end up in Miami with money somewhere. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but... I'm still excited to see what him and Dwayne Wade can do because uh, you guys know about Hassan Whiteside by now. You know, I didn't do my commentary on him because I don't like to just like create stuff to do my commentary about. And I didn't feel like I'd have a whole lot to say with Hassan Whiteside because we, you know, he speaks for itself. His game speaks for itself. He's a really good player. Uh, I'm going to be excited to see what they can do. But ultimately, to make that real playoff push and that second half push that I thought they were going to make, I really, you know, they needed Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh is a much bigger piece than anyone knows. Having Hassan Whiteside for the second half was definitely going to be beneficial to him because Chris Bosh, you know, we all know that he's been playing down there without a legit big man for about four years now. So he's had to pretend to be a center. He's had to make up for the rebounding issues. And, uh, yeah, you know, I feel sorry. If you're a Heat fan, you know, I, I really feel bad for you guys because you guys finally caught a break. You got going tragic without giving up all dang you didn't create another hole you got him for free and uh that's the other thing you know if he does decide to walk away this summer at least you guys can say well it's not like we gave up a really big piece because danny granger wasn't really being used by you guys so that's about all i had to say about going tragic i had a lot more to say until i was really bummed out when i was riding home and i got the notification that chris bosh was out for the season had a lot more to say about that going tragic edition but you know now they're just going to be one of the many east teams that are just not up to par and they might not make the playoffs because as far as i know they're they're like only a half a game above like ninth or tenth spot so we're gonna have to see how that pans out but overall miami heat would definitely the winners of that trade because they got going tragic for free let's be real so um I'm going to move down here. I did just want to note that the uh, Pelicans did get Norris Cole. You know, Norris Cole got two championships in Miami. He moved on. And uh, I know Drew Holiday is out with his injury or whatever. So I guess that will help them. But, you know, the Pelicans with Anthony Davis, you know, he it seems like every other week he has a career-threatening injury, like a, a, a potentially career-threatening injury. You know, his shoulder's messed up. So I don't really have the Pelicans making the playoffs, and I'm going to get to that in a little bit. So uh, let's go down okay these are the big ones this is the trade that i loved i was hyped as hell when i heard this one the oklahoma city thunder trade you guys if you're an oklahoma city fan listening to this you guys went from i don't know if you're gonna make the playoffs to instant like finals contenders like in this trade the okc thunder have finally done what i wanted them to do forever they finally made their team better by trade I don't remember what my commentary was in, but if you go back to one of my old my commentaries, one thing I said about the Thunder, you know what, it might not have been in my commentary actually, on my website, I wrote an article about Kevin Durant, and one of the reasons I said that he was going to leave, I was really sure he was going to Washington, is because I said the Oklahoma City Thunder never get better, they don't ever sign anybody in a free agency, all their players like Reggie Jackson, James Harden that grow up to like be good pieces, ultimately end up being too expensive to keep, and they want to move on to their own team because they don't like to play behind the Westbrooks and share their shots with KD. They finally did it, and they did it for cheap, too. So here's what went, went down. Reggie Jackson went to the Pistons, which is perfect for everybody. Reggie Jackson didn't want to be in Oklahoma anymore. He's really worked on his game to become a starting point guard. This works out for the Pistons because Jen Jennings went down with that brutal torn in, uh, it's Achilles. But this is perfect because now Reggie Jackson can bloom, and I really think that we're going to see Detroit in the playoffs this year because they're only a game. The East is so bad. That the Pistons have had time to make up, you know, all the all the uh, issues they were having, you know, earlier in the season when they got rid of Josh Smith. 
they can be in the playoffs now and i want to see detroit in the playoffs because now honestly with chris bosh out i would probably rather see detroit you know a young upcoming team with some really good players like drummond i would rather see them in the playoffs and i would then i would see um miami or the nets or somebody so let me go ahead and get the rest of this trade this is huge oklahoma city received in this trade ennis cancer steve novak dj augustine and kyle singler and i'm just going to read the rest of this so i can talk about it the Utah Jazz got uh, Grant Jarrett, who I'm going to admit I've never heard of. Kendrick Perkins, who they waived, and he went to the Cavaliers, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. They got some draft rights to a center. They got a 2017 second pick and a future first round pick. Okay, let's talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder. Holy shit. Everything changed. I'm going to put a picture at this part of the video of the face that the Oklahoma City Thunder are making at the Golden State Warriors. Because if you look at the standings, it's not really likely. I mean, I don't know. The Spurs, they're slipping. So Oklahoma could get past AC theoretically. But, you know, realistically with how wins and losses work, uh, Oklahoma might end up at AC. I'm going to tell you, with this trade, assuming everyone stays healthy, Oklahoma, oh my bad, Golden State, y'all asses are in trouble, OKC is coming for y'all. So they went and got Ennis Cancer, they got DJ Augustine, and Kyle Singler, but let's look at what they already have, and this is what the problem that is the, is the problem that they were having. So recently, you know, I haven't really mentioned this guy, but I wanted to talk about him a lot, Mitch McGarry, he finally got to play, you know, this rookie class has been destroyed by injuries, and he, I think he broke his foot earlier in the season, he barely played. Now this guy comes in and he is a great energy guy. He's a um, some people said he was overweight, but I don't see a problem with his weight. Uh, he's been playing really good ball. He's rebounding. He gets some he gets some points in there. He's just a really high energy guy, and he's a uh, I think he's a center. I'm pretty sure Mitch McGarry is a center. All right. Uh, they have Stephen Adams who's gonna come back from his broken hand, and then they have Ernest Cantor now. OKC is they just got so big by just giving away Kendrick Perkins, which I don't think any OKC fans really like Kendrick Perkins anymore. After that year, y'all went to the finals. I believe y'all stopped liking them. Now I don't know exactly why the Jazz traded away Ernest Cantor because this guy is really skilled, and uh, they played. I think he played his first game with the Thunder. Was it last night? I can't tell against the Nuggets or whatever. He did really good. I watched his interview. He is really happy to be there. The guy is a great rebounder. He has some moves, too, and I think he's going to be starting a center over Stephen Adams, honestly, uh, eventually. Like, I really think when Stephen and Adams come back, they need to use him and Mitch McGarry off the bench because Ennis Cantor is the most skilled center there. You know, Stephen Adams, he's a high-energy guy. You know, no, no disrespect, but Cantor is the better center here. So uh, that's really, really big for them. Now they also got DJ Augustine. Now look what DJ Augustine does. If you've been following DJ Augustine's story, he's really a, been a great story, kind of like Nate Robinson around the NBA. He's smaller, but this dude, everywhere he's gone, he's pretty much left a good mark. He was in Chicago not too long ago, uh, filling in for Derrick Rose, played great basketball under Tom Thibodeau. He was in Detroit this year playing pretty good basketball too behind Brandon Jennings. Now he's in OKC. Now this is what OKC really needed, right? They have a good point guard now. But it's not a Reggie Jackson style point guard. The guy who, you know, Reggie Jackson was ready to start somewhere. And, you know, he hates, he was fed up with not getting his minutes and whatnot. He got what he wanted getting out. But look at this. Now, I really think they can use this lineup of, okay, here's the lineup I have in my head. Not starting, but in certain situations, I see DJ Augustine at the point guard, Russell Westbrook at the two guard, KD at small forward, uh, Serge Ibaka at power forward, and Ennis Kanta at center. You know, using that lineup to finish games could be deadly because we all know Russell Westbrook. I mean, let's be real. The guy is a shooting guard playing point guard. This is going to allow him to play shooting guard a little bit more, I think. Um, another guy they added was Kyle Singler. He's a small forward coming over from uh, the uh, Detroit Pistons. He's pretty good, too. You know, he's just a good rotation player is what they need. But uh, I don't want to talk too much. And then Steve Novak, obviously, who I don't know if he's going to get a lot of playing time or not. But, you know, I don't want to talk so much about the uh, individual players because I didn't really blink up their stats. I just know what I know about these guys is that they are all great system guys. And this is what OKC has never had, all right? So you can go back. Anything I've said about OKC in, like, the last month or two, just erase anything I've said about uh, Kevin Durant leaving or anything because – given that they're going to stay healthy like i know kevin durant just had a minor procedure on his foot to move the screw around that's going to keep him out about a week but if he's actually healthy by playoff time boy these thunder group this thunder group is going far because they now have what they have never had this supporting cast is something that they've never had they've always had one or two good players coming off the bench so like when they uh, oh excuse me when they went to the uh nba finals and played the miami heat in 2012 they had James Harden playing six man. That was really their, you know, one really good guy off the bench. And that was it though. You had Nick Collinson, but he's not that good. Then uh, you know, you had Reggie Jackson this last few time these last few years or whatnot. 
now they have a bunch of system guys. They have that supporting cast. And I would even go as far to call this team stacked now. I think the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers and the Oklahoma City Thunder are the most stacked teams in the NBA now. These system guys are going to come in. You have many different rotations that you can run now, which you never had before. You just have such a good set. I just keep using that word supporting cast. This supporting cast is so damn good. I don't see anyone beating OKC in the West this year. I think this year uh, we're going to have the first A seed since, what was it, the Houston Rockets go to the finals? I think the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to the finals because these trades they made, they rebuilt their whole bench in one day. And like I said, they went from, you know, yeah, you guys are probably, you, you're fighting for a playoff spot and you're probably going to get beaten the first or second round to easy final contenders because look at it. The West doesn't have a clear winner anymore. The San Antonio Spurs are clearly, clearly, clearly starting to lose it. You know, they used everything they had in that finals run last year. And earlier this season, I said that they were still my pick to go to the finals, but I just don't see it anymore because it becomes a point where, you you know, you can't keep losing games. And I'm watching the Spurs the other night. They lost to the Clippers without uh, Blake Griffin. Who did they lose to? They lost us. Oh, they got their asses kicked by the Golden State Warriors. And um, this is the part where they need to make their run, too, which is the problem. Like, the Spurs are going to fuck around and become an AC this year because, you know, they keep losing. OKC is only going north from here. The Spurs can't keep it together. They're going to end up in eighth this year. And, uh, I'm, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, but the Spurs are a playoff team. Yeah, look, I, I think the Spurs have lost it, all right? <laughs> I, think it, I think it's done. Who knows? I mean, Tony Parker is definitely a playoff point guard. The guys are great. We don't know what's going to happen with that. I don't like doubting the Spurs, but I think their reign is over for uh, I think that I kind of think their reign is over now. Um, that leaves no clear winner in the West because you talk about the Clippers. You talk about Golden State. None of these guys are proven in the playoffs yet. Golden State hasn't proven anything in the playoffs. No, I have the Clippers, the Blazers, Grizzlies. Nobody's proven anything in the playoffs yet. OKC has been to the finals. They still have the two poor guys with Westbrook and Durant, and now they have a big supporting cast. I got them knocking out Golden State in the first round if they play them in the first round. Then I got them going to the finals. And uh, I just want to throw this in there. My finals pick is the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder and the Cleveland Cavaliers this year. That's who it is. I think they're the most stacked rosters. They have the most support out of anybody. Um, and I guess I'll just go ahead and talk about this this uh, signing now since I'm already here. You know, no reason to save it for later. The Oklahoma City, or yeah, the Cleveland Cavaliers just picked up uh, Kendrick Perkins. Not sure how much he's going to do, but yeah, I mean, I, Kendrick Perkins was a Celtic before. I mean, I can tell you about the guy. He's a, he's an enforcer. Maybe not as good as he once was because Dwight Howard once said that he was the hardest guy to play against, you know, as, as far as like defense. And, um, you know, I don't think Kendrick Perkins has that kind of swag anymore. But anything is really good for the Cavaliers. Now they've got three big men with uh, got Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson. My bad. That's four. Damn, my bad. That's actually four. Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson. Miles Goff and Kendra Perkins, and I think that was the last roster spot, so that means no Ray Allen this year, but they're set now. I mean, I think anybody who's been watching basketball this year, you, you know, the thing we always said was the Chicago Bulls, the only thing they had over the Cleveland Cavaliers was size, with Gasol, with Noah, with uh, Todd Gibson. The Cleveland Cavaliers have stacked everything. They filled every hole they had. I don't know where the hell they got all this money from, but uh, they got everything they needed. So I got Cavs and Thunder in the finals, and that is going, if Kevin Durant can stay healthy, kick-ass finals i'm gonna be glued to that tv you're gonna get KD and lebron but now it's not gonna be like unfair like it was in 20 well i don't wouldn't call it unfair let's just say it's not gonna be like it was in 2012 because we know in 2012 lebron had Dwayne wade he had bosh i mean they were stacked and you know westbrook and durant basically made the uh thunder you know now you got uh the every they're all stacked from head to toe they got everything they need on the bench so there's no excuses that that the teams are even is what i'm saying they weren't even in 2012 but oh boy thunder and cavaliers please let this happen this is the one time in my life that i'm actually because i don't like lebron fanboys we don't get along at all but this is the one time i'm cheering for lebron to get to the finals because i want to see kevin durant and lebron i want to see the you know the, the clash of the titans two mega pack teams it's like pacquiao and mayweather like this, this it'd be a mega fight so um, okay, I, I just kind of mixed a little, I just kind of mixed two commentaries in one, because I was talking about trades, but, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move down. I was super excited to talk about the Thunder, you know, that, that was said, they rebuilt, they did everything they needed to, I'm back in the Thunder completely. So, uh, let's go down, and, uh, now you got this, okay, this is some shit. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm, you know, wonder what I'm laughing at, I'm laughing at you Sixers, like, you, what, what the fuck, like, for real? What is the point of building through the draft if you're going to trade the players that you get in the draft? Like, the point of building in the draft is to draft good basketball players, build them, and make them the cornerstone of your franchise, unless you can get a franchise player for them. 
what the actual fuck were the Sixers doing trading Michael Carter Williams? When I saw that, my friend, he texted me, Michael Carter Williams to Bucks. I was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> they traded him. So, uh, you know, we have no reason to believe that Embiid or Noel are going to be there. Because it, it seems like the Sixers, their management just says, huh, we, we finally drafted a good player. Let's see if we can trade him and get another one. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I don't know. It's so counterproductive. Like, I think they're secretly plotting to get out of Philadelphia to try to piss you fans off. You know, they're trying to, you know, lower the fan support so they can go move to Seattle. I don't know. But anyways, back on topic. Um... <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiots okay the uh the suns got brandon knight the bucks got michael carter williams in this uh three team trade so the official thing on this was brandon knight and kendall marshall went to the suns michael carter williams tyler ennis and miles plumley went to the i don't get the suns either they sent miles plumley to the bucks the dude was a good player all the sixers got out of this trade was a 2015 first round pick from the lakers why though like michael carter williams is he's a super good point why why did you trade an up-and-coming point guard for another draft pick that makes no fucking sense so anyways uh the phoenix suns here you know basically in essence they released one point guard because uh you know they they uh traded isaiah thomas which i'm gonna get to that in a little bit but uh then they got brandon knight in return and uh this also didn't make a whole lot of sense for me for the bucks now i'm not laughing at the bucks really because they got in my opinion they got the better point guard they got the better player in this trade but um the suns you know they they replaced the point guard so they didn't lose all their point guards so now they're gonna have eric bledsoe and brandon knight down there and uh, if you've been watching basketball you know anything about bu the bugs brandon knight is having a breakout season some people thought he should have made the all-star team on the reserves so the suns got a very quality point guard this not there you know they're young they got something they can build on but i still don't understand why they traded miles plumley the guys are forward and if anything that's what you guys need down there like you need other players because you've been stacked on the guards like i i don't i don't 100 get that trade up they did trade tyler ennis who was getting no uh he was getting no time anyways because it was a complete clusterfuck down there between those point guards so uh you know yeah i don't have a lot to say about those trade this trade oh actually i do my bad okay the phoenix suns you guys uh with you in, you know in this deadline i kind of feel like the suns you guys screwed yourself like uh you know one comment i left on the nba video was that you know dear suns fans you can leave your team for the next week without being called a bandwagon because in my opinion this was some dumb shit you guys were a feel good story last year you know nobody expected you You guys were expected to win like 20 or 30 games but you went on to win 48 and you only missed the playoffs because you were playing in the west so you guys were a really good team really fun team to watch and now it's almost like you guys are kind of start nah, i wouldn't say starting over getting brandon Knight isn't exactly starting over but you definitely went backwards and um no playoffs for the suns this year because oklahoma city thunder they're gonna be they're gonna surge like that a seed is going to the thunder like i'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there unless kevin durant's foot just is a problematic even then okay so he's gonna get it because westbrook like kind of likes to have the floor to himself anyways but unless they just had some more unfortunate injuries that a seed has the thunder's name written on it and if the spurs keep slipping like this the thunder are gonna move even further up so no playoffs for the suns this year sorry you guys but uh that's really what i had to say about that you guys got a quality point guard though brandon knight he's a really good point guard uh his doom days are over you know he got crossed by kyrie irving dunked on by brandon jordan damn i said brandon deandre jordan missed the game open game winning layup you know his doom days seem like they're over you know i don't know somebody had something against them it's like the nba guys were out to get him but the guys turned into a good point guard now so uh you know oh but yeah back to the sixers what what the fuck like somebody just get in the comment section and explain that to me why 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 i don't know i'm pissed for you guys and i'm not even a sixers fan um one thing i heard though to make sense of the bucks trade on nba tv they said that you know jason kidd just thought that uh brandon knight wasn't the uh point guard of the future you know they thought that michael carter williams was a better point guard than him and they also thought brandon knight was going to get really expensive too so um you know whatever but uh you guys did get Marco carter williams so the bucks you know you guys are straight you know the, now the bucks if you're a bucks fan you have reason to be happy for the future uh you look like you're gonna make the playoffs this year you got michael carter williams you're gonna have jabari parker who i really hope come, makes a strong comeback from his torn acl and since he doesn't rely so much on speed and like precision and stuff his acl injury might not bother him that much because there's been players who don't who haven't been bothered by acl you know to go on he's not like an explosive derrick rose type player so we'll see how he comes back from that but uh, yeah you guys that you guys got Giannis answer to kumpo you know you guys got a future down there and uh, you definitely got mcw so you know good y'all won that one uh yeah sixers <laughs> i don't know let me just move on before i keep before i keep ranting about that okay this was a really really good trade that i'm looking at right here the it says versatile a follow headed to portland 
Great trade for the I applaud you guys for getting Aaron Afalo. I know a lot about Aaron Afalo. He played here in Orlando, bounced around from the Nuggets twice. The guy's a good shooting guard. And uh, that's what the um, Portland Trailblazers needed because you had Wesley Matthews, but Wesley Matthews is mostly a three-point shooter. I think Aaron Afalo brings some better things to the table. You know, I think he has some defense on him. Overall, just a better shooting guard, more versatile shooting guard than Wesley Matthews. He's not so one-dimensional. So uh, let's look at the official trade details. Trailblazers got Alonzo G and uh, Aaron Aflalo. The Denver Nuggets got Will Barden, Victor Cla Claver, Claver, and Thomas Robinson, who I think was bought out by the Nuggets. So, and then the, the, um, Oh, my bad. The, I was saying, yeah, the Nuggets got Will Barton, Claver, and Robinson. And they got a 2016 first-round pick. That's lottery protected. All right, so I'm just going to look at this and say, first of all, I feel bad for my boy Will Barton. Because, you know, Will Barton, he's pretty exciting to watch play. He has a lot of uh, energy. And it seems like the Blazers just kind of threw him under the bus and said, yep, we found somebody better. Thank you for your services. Bye. <laughs> they sent them to the Nuggets to go die. So, uh, you know, I feel a little bit bad for you. But, you know, whatever. You got money. You're an NBA player. You're straight. I'm sure it's not bothering you like that. But uh, anyways, this really puts the Blazers you know the west just whew, the west just keeps on winning like i don't even know what to say about that like they got damian lillard now their official lineup is going to be lillard a flalo uh nick batum aldridge and you got center is robin lopez right i think so that's your center um that's going to make you guys really a threat for the playoffs like i don't not a, see i'm just not 100 percent sure what to make of portland because i feel like i got cheated on let me tell you what i mean by that Last year, I thought 100%, I was 100% sure that Portland was going to beat the Spurs. Like, I was going in and talking mad shit. I was like, yeah, I think Portland is going to be, or in that Portland and Houston series last year, I was like, yeah, whoever goes into uh, the second round is going to beat the Spurs. And then Portland got there, they got their asses molly -whopped. So, uh, <laughs> and, you know, I don't exactly know what to make of them. You know, they're a good team. Damian Lillard, he's obviously driven because, you know, he feels like he's always underrated. Oh, but one big thing is LaMarcus Aldridge. He missed the game last night. See, this is why I'm happy that I waited to talk about the trades to let dust settle a little bit lamarcus aldridge uh he you know he's been playing with that uh he tore something in his thumb and um he's been playing with it but he sat out last night so i don't know like is this the part where he takes that six to eight weeks off that he was supposed to take off i don't know i hope not because you know you're in the wild wild west uh you can easily slip down to about seventh or eighth spot and you don't really want that problem because uh you know you don't want to face like the best teams first you know you kind of want to get into it and um yeah but anyways great trade for the uh great great trade for these guys i thought it was a good trade for the nuggets i thought they got a quality uh big man in thomas robinson but they bought him out so you know i don't exactly know where he's gonna go now i would say the cavaliers but the cavaliers just spent their last roster spot so uh you know good trade for portland right there i think as, as i speak they're like in third or fourth place i don't know the west is like ever changing but anyways yeah I, I i think that's a really good trade i don't have his averages pulled up i would be able to talk about that a little bit more but i'm going to move on because i'm not 100 percent sure what to make of the blazers yet uh now this was the one this was sentimental you know obviously and i think a lot of people are happy about it brooklyn sends garnett to minnesota uh i was happy about this for one main reason oh okay i got a little bit of a story to tell i should put this uh in a different video called the things the three kings of new york predicted but i'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now and i might bring it up later again in that video um okay you guys remember the summer league videos that i did with blacktop and stuff like that well i actually played 16 of those games now granted i cut it down to eight because i realized with school and everything at that time that i just wasn't going to be able to get 16 of those out in a timely manner but one of those episodes had kevin garnett in a minnesota jersey on blacktop with andrew wiggins and the gist and the concept of that episode was going to be kevin garnett mentoring andrew wiggins and um you know that's why he was obviously in my series kevin garnett is young you know he has his young attributes again so he's also really better too but he's like he's a lot older too he's a lot older than wiggins so uh he was gonna mentor him but you know you guys never saw that episode i still have it on my hard drive like i might show it on the screen so you guys don't think i'm bullshitting just as proof like i have it but in real life garnett got sent back to minnesota and what is he gonna be doing because he doesn't average a lot he's gonna be mentoring the young guys aka andrew wiggins if you guys see my instagram now i don't know what this is but my three kings of newark i've predicted more than one thing with these moves i predicted kevin love to cleveland before i ever had a reason to believe he would go there uh accidentally put stardomar on dallas after he was waived by the knicks and that happened too and uh kevin garnett going to mentor andrew wiggins apparently i predicted that too and i had no reason to ever believe he was going back to minnesota because you know i remember i'm a celtic fan i told you guys and um 
Kevin Garnett once said that he would never play for the Timberwolves again. He said he wouldn't play for them again. Like he said, a fan asked him to come back, and he said no way. Like he would just never, because you know he was mad. As, I think he was mad for getting traded. Like he didn't want to get traded. You know, this guy is loyal to the end. He was even loyal to the Nets. I mean, as bad as the season is they're having, he said that nah, you was in it to win it with these guys. So, uh, anyways, this is a sentimental thing. I think that we're all happy about it because he's gonna get. This is a cool way to retire. You know, you go back to where it all started. He was there when he was like 18. Oh, fun fact. Uh, Kevin Garnett was drafted in the same year that Zach Levine and Andrew Wiggins were born in 1995. That's the year I was born too, but that's crazy when you think about it. Like, they were babies. They were newborn babies when Kevin Garnett was drafted. They are on the same basketball team now. Like, that, 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 I don't know. I thought that was a fun fact. Obviously, this trade isn't going to do a whole lot. Um, The Nets did get a quality player with Thaddeus Young, but, you know, with Brooklyn, you guys, you... <laughs> That, that owner, Mikel Procroft, like, yeah, he, he fucked y'all because uh, y'all got more than one problem. Like, I talk about that as Young being a quality player, but y'all got more problems than that. Like, cap space problems. Y'all got no draft picks for the future. Like, Brooklyn, like, I, if I were y'all, like, I would just, like, beg Adam Silver to just, like, get a redo button or something. Like, set the team's finances and everything to, like, like day one or something like that so you guys can just build from there. Cause I, Ooh, y'all got problems. It don't even matter that y'all got that is young. Y'all got problems. That's what y'all got. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you know, it's a sentimental thing. Kevin Garnett, you know, um, uh, he has very high praise uh, from people around the league. And I don't even think I need to explain this because he's a guy that you just want in your locker room. You know, Kevin Garnett now, what is he, 38 years old? He still is every bit as intense as he was when he was 19. He still bangs his head, you know, really intense. Uh, he was about to get into it with uh, Dwight Howard one day. They were about to, they were about to fight for real. But, um... My bad. I was starting to rant a little bit. I just got a notification on my phone. So, yeah, you know, it's just a sentimental thing. I'm happy to see him there, you know. And, and oh, yeah, also, this is going to help us forget his Brooklyn Nets days because his Brooklyn Nets days, those are miserable memories. No one wants to remember Kevin Garnett like that. He's a good guy. No one wants to remember this guy, you know, in the playoffs, like, missing a layup under the basket. Like, <laughs> let's just forget he played for the Brooklyn Nets, all right? Somebody go to Wikipedia and edit that out. No one wants to remember he ever played for Brooklyn. It never happened, and we're good. So, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Yes, super fucking happy about this one. Sun Sin Thomas to Celtics. When I saw this one, this was the best day of my Celtics fan life since, uh, let's see. Uh, damn, it's been a long time since I had a good day as a Celtics fan. <laughs> um, this was probably the best day of my Celtics fan life since, okay, I can go back to when Paul Pierce uh, hit that three on LeBron James and the 2012 playoffs, and I thought that we beat them. It was game five, I think, and it looked like we were going to lose game five, and then Paul Pierce knocked that three down on LeBron. Then all of a sudden, it looked like we were going to win. That was the last great day I had as a Celtic fan, and uh, this was a great day. We got Isaiah Thomas. I mean, the guy is real. When he was on the Kings and he was the point guard there, I mean, the guy's my size. He's 5'9", and he averaged 20 points, and I think six assists was the stats that I saw for that. Super happy. That was only in his third season in the NBA, too. He's really young. I want him to start for us eventually, and we can build around this guy now. And we got him again for free because we just sent the rotation player and got a star. I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to say star, but star talent. Um, we sent Marcus Thornton and a 2016 first round pick from the Cavs. Uh, this is Danny Ainge, you know, with the mastermind. I mean, he stacked all those picks, and uh, now he can start, you know, he can either draft them or he can start rolling them off for better players like this. And, um, you know, I was a little bit pissed because we're only two games out of the playoffs, and I was like, oh, cool. You know, we got Isaiah Thomas now, and we got Jared Sullinger. So uh, I thought we were going to make a playoff push, and, you know, I was going to be happy because I'm a, I'm a diehard fan, like, whether we're good or bad. I was going to watch these playoffs, even though I know we'd probably get, like, beat in the first round. I was still going to watch every game. And uh, we still might make it but Jared Sullinger got a stress fracture in his foot and it's like the NBA gods like they just choose to like fuck with certain teams like you know the Heat just got a good trade and look like they were gonna make a push now Bosch gets his lungs uh blood clotted we finally get a good point guard you know we haven't had a good player like that uh, we, we in the same season actually you know we traded Rondo then we got Isaiah Thomas in the same season like it's moving faster than I expected and um now you know Jared Sullinger just like stress fractured his foot. He's out for the season. So now you know we're just gonna we still might make the playoffs because the East is that bad. But you know I, I I don't know. Um, I don't know how long Isaiah. Let, let me click on his name real quick. Hold on. I just wanted to see like if he's uh how long he's under contract for. Uh, 
I don't see any contract information here. I don't know how long his uh, contract is for, but if Danny Ains knows anything, he's going to keep this guy. I want this dude on our team. Let him start at point guard. This season, he's averaging 15 points and 3 assists, but that's justified. His numbers are cut because he was playing in a 3-point guard rotation, coming off the bench. He's probably going to start here eventually, I would say. And um, maybe Marcus Smart will play the 2, or maybe we'll trade Marcus Smart. I don't know. But I'm really happy about that. If you're a Celtic fan, you should be really happy about that. I was tweeting my, one of my uh, fellow commentators on Twitter about it, and we talked about it. And, uh, you know, he was a little bit skeptical about it at first. He was confused, but I was like, shit, I'm happy. Like, this is one of the best point guards. Like, he's a be he's a better, he's one of the better point guards. So, we finally have something to be happy about, you know. And uh, I think, if anything, this just shows that Danny Ainge, the guy, you know, he might piss you off with some of the stuff he does, but he can be kind of relentless because he got a bunch of draft picks. So, whether he decides to draft a new team or trade for a new team, the Boston Celtics are going to be relevant again not that long from now because we have a, I mean, it's almost impossible possible to fuck this one up like we have so much stuff to trade eventually like we're gonna be good so really happy we got Isaiah Thomas really quality player and again for the Phoenix Suns <laughs> oh, I don't know what you guys were doing right there all you got was Marcus Thornton and you got a 2016 first round pick but I don't know what you guys were doing you think you could have done better than that um that that I'm, a, I'm gonna take a wild stab and just assume this was a bad day to be a, th a Suns fan like I went around on Facebook and I looked at some like forums to see what you guys were saying and uh some of the Suns fans were like ah oh, this is why we're never gonna win a championship you know they were talking shit about it a lot of people didn't like it but it is what it is we got a good player out of that I'm happy I'm selfish about it uh Rockets got uh McDaniels from the Sixers that boy can jump that's all I'm gonna say about him I know he can dunk you know it was not a huge move they traded him for Isaiah Cannon and um yeah, you know, not not really much I wanted to say about that. The Kings got, they swapped Andre Miller for Ramon Sessions. I heard that was strictly because George Carl wanted a good system point card like Andre Miller. Not much to say about that again. Oh, yeah, and this is one that flew under the radar that I didn't really hear anybody talk about. The uh, Pistons got Tayshaun Prince, and oh, I didn't know we got Jonas Jarabko. Damn, that makes me look like a Fairweather fan. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. No, like, I knew we got Isaiah Thomas. Okay, so this is news to me. We got Jonas Jarebko and uh, Detotome for Tayshaun Prince. Um, And this is actually still, you know, I said that the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, that was for sentimental reasons. This one is actually for competitive reasons because, like I said, go look at the standings. Detroit has a real, real chance to make the playoffs. The Nets aren't that good. The Miami Heat to have a really uh, unfortunate and ugly twist of fate that's may that might kick them out of the playoffs. The playoffs are wide open for the Pistons, and Tayshaun Prince is a good guy. He's still a quality player. Um, it, It's a little sentimental, too, you know. He's... um. He came back, you know, you won a championship with that team. Oh, that's another thing. I I don't know if you call this predicting because, I mean, this this might have happened. Uh, I haven't showed the Pistons in my New York series yet, Three Kings of New York. But Tayshaun Prince is on, a, is on the Pistons in the Three Kings of New York. I put him there. And uh, now he's on the Pistons in real life. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just like the fifth coincidence for my series. I have no clue. Maybe I have a crystal ball. Maybe I'm in Illuminati. Maybe I'm not. No, I don't know. I'm not suggesting nothing. But, uh, okay. So, yeah. We got Jonas Terebko. I'm pretty sure Jonas Terebko and uh, the Totem are just some guys we're probably going to include in, uh, in another trade um, eventually. Like, we've had so many players this year. As a Celtic fan, like, I'm just confused. Like, it feels like we've had so many different players this year. Like, we've had to have at least, like, 25 players on our roster this year, like, because it's coming through. So, you know, we're, we're just, like, we're just, like, a center for, like, moving players, basically. We have a player for, like, a few weeks or a month, and then he goes, and I, I don't I don't know what to make of that. So, uh, okay. That might be it. Uh, I think I'm at 40 minutes now. I'm at 38 minutes. Uh, yeah, the New York Knicks got Chavez and some picks for Pablo Prigioni. They sent him to the Rockets. Not really much there, huh? JaVale McGee went to the Sixers. That's fitting. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm not going to diss nobody. <laughs> yeah, but y'all got JaVale McGee. And, um, yeah, that's it for this trade deadline. So, uh, I'm just going to wrap this up with some final thoughts. Uh, the landscape of the NBA is totally changed because of that. I think before the trade deadline in the finals, I thought it was a toss up, but I didn't think the Oklahoma City Thunder would get in there because of the same. I thought OKC was going to come up short like they always did because I said they hadn't gotten any better. They had the boy Mitch McGarry, who I thought was a really good breath, uh, brush of or damn breath of fresh air for them. Yeah, Mitch McGarry, you know, he's a really good help for them. But, you know, I, I just thought about the Thunder. I was like, ah. You know, I don't I don't think they're going to beat the Warriors because they're struggling so hard to make the playoffs. But 
I mean, you can see it on everybody's face in OKC. I mean, they're... oh, yeah, that's what I meant to say. These are the winners of the trade deadline for me. It's the Oklahoma City Thunder by, like, miles. It's not even close who's the winner of the trade deadline. It's the Thunder, okay? You can see it. They're revitalized. I've been watching some uh, Thunder highlights and Thunder games. You can see it in their faces when they're in the interviews. Like, Russell Westbrook, before the new players came, um, you know, when, when they traded for him, but they weren't actually with them at the game. Yeah, he was smiling after the game. He was happy after they beat Dallas because he knew what was up. They got a team now. I listen to Ernest Cantor talk. And this dude, he didn't even know what to do with himself. He's so damn happy to play, be playing for a winning team. Uh, in his interview with the Nuggets last night. Um, if you're an Oklahoma City fan, you should be very excited. Because not only did you guys um, really give yourself a really, really good shot at a title this year. Now you don't have to fear that breakup that I really thought was coming with uh, Kevin Durant and the Thunder. Because... I thought Kevin Durant was leaving for sure. Like, I just kept looking at it, and I'm like, you know, when you look at why players leave a basketball team, it's exactly because of what's been happening to Kevin Durant. You know, they get close to the finals, or they float around the finals, they get there, but they can never get there. And then the player or the team uh, management doesn't surround them with the proper players to actually make the championship and get a championship. And I was looking at that, and the prognosis was fitting. Like, that was that's what the Oklahoma City Thunder were going through. They had Kevin Durant, but they weren't getting anything you know to help him and uh, they did it man and one day I, we woke up one day and oklahoma was, was a real championship contender man they they did the most um they're really big down though now they have Serge Ibaka who I think had a career high on blocks last night I gotta I got look that up I don't know but you got Ibaka now you got Kenner down there Steven Adams you got rid of Kendrick Perkins who I uh, as far as I know no Oklahoma City fan really you know liked anymore <laughs> at least the ones on the internet that I came in contact with and you the thing is these aren't just like big men these aren't just names you guys got quality big men and you have Mitch McGarry too that so that's four big guys they're all quality it's not like it's not like you know like a Steve Novak type player with steve novak you guys got him in the trade but it's just like yeah he can shoot but you know who knows if he's gonna play no you guys got big man for days now these guys are serviceable they're gonna be doing the most down there cancer you know is gonna be i think i really think he's gonna be starting really big guy down there and um that's what you're gonna need because if if i'm correcting this commentary and saying that the thunder are gonna beat the Cavs in the finals well the Cavs are pretty big too now i mean they had a problem with that earlier but uh now they don't mozgov has proved to be bigger than anyone knew he was uh Perkins is going to be an enforcer and I kind of wonder on my part like did did Kendrick Perkins do that despite the thunder like was he pissed that they sent him to Utah and that's why he went to go play with LeBron I, I don't know who knows oh but I didn't even mention y'all full bench for the thunder y'all full bench is a uh, wait is waiter starting somebody help me out real quick Westbrook yeah, wait, Waiter starts, doesn't he? Okay, so Waiter starts. He's not on the bench like I thought. But I didn't mention Anthony Moore on the bench, too. Who got That guy, he has a ratchet. He's a shooter. So, uh, yeah, you know, you you guys you guys won the trade deadline. I can't praise that enough. I might be ranting a little bit. But uh, I'm excited for you guys because, you know, I really didn't want to see Kevin Durant become a bad guy. You know, leave Oklahoma and now everyone hates him. Because you, you guys know these days, that's all it takes for a player to become widely hated. It's him leaving his team. I mean, just look at the players now. LeBron, I don't, I mean, I don't know if people really liked him before he left, a lot of people, but when he left, people hated the man. Dwight Howard, when he left the Magic and the Lakers, people hate, <clears throat> I can't even find anybody who likes Dwight Howard anymore. Um, Kevin Durant didn't want to see him go down that road, and I don't think he's going to have to now. I think he's looking at something really, really nice, and um, so yeah. Uh, is there anybody else in the trade notes I really want to mention? Uh, I guess the Cavaliers, y'all definitely caught a W getting Kendrick Perkins, because that only helps with y'all size down there. But uh, yeah, these these thunder. Oh yeah, the Pistons are they are a they're not the winner, but they are a winner too because they filled a really really big void. I mean, when Jennings, I wanted to cry when Jennings torn his tore his uh, Achilles. So when I saw him go down with the Achilles, I just looked up at the NBA guys and I just said, why? Like, what? Can we be happy for one fucking se one season? Can we be happy? Like, it seems like this is happening ever since the lockout where like an important player gets hurt. Like, can we be happy for one year? And, uh, you know, I was happy because the Pistons were playing such good basketball. And I was like, uh, you know, they're going to get to the playoffs and make the playoffs, you know, a little bit interesting. But he tore it. But, hey, Reggie Jackson, perfect pickup. The guy, he needed this to bloom. He can start now. He's going to bloom there. Great, great pickup for Detroit. Okay, so I'm done talking about the trades. I want to talk about one little side note. This is kind of off the topic of trades. I'm at 43 minutes now. Thank you if you're still listening. Um... Paul George and the Indiana Pacers. I've been hearing many, many, many reports that Paul George wants to come back this year. First, it was doubt, but now it's one of those things where it's like, I think there's better than a 50% chance now. Let's take a look at it. And this is just uh, more stuff about the playoffs. 
And the Pacers today, as I speak, I think they're only uh, anywhere from a half a game to two games out of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Being that the East is not that good, uh, Paul George, his his desired return date is in the middle of March. He wants to fully practice at full speed on March 1st, and he wants to be back by the middle of March. Now, I'm not making this decision for him because I would hate to be the guy who said I wanted Paul George to come back and then see him get re-injured and we get like kind of like a Derrick Rose situation where he's just not quite the same anymore. I would hate to see that, but given that they're so close to the playoffs, the East is so bad, and a broken leg isn't as bad as a torn tendon. You know, once your bone heals, it heals, and it typically doesn't break again. If PG-13 is ready to come back, we're going to have a decent Eastern Conference playoffs this year because it looked terrible at first. But let's say that we take Miami and uh, I think it's Brooklyn. Is it Brooklyn or Charlotte? Let, let's just get rid of those teams that we don't, you know, that aren't really going to do much in the playoffs anymore. Let's say Miami, Charlotte, Brooklyn, you know, or two of them and sweep them out. And you move in the Pacers with Paul George and the Pistons with Reggie Jackson. We're going to have a pretty good looking, you know, playoffs. Like what if the Pacers meet the Hawks in the first round, you know, because they got AC and they have Paul George, like, would the Hawks get eliminated? You know, the Pacers got Rodney Stuckey. I know no one's paying attention to them, but, I mean, they could quietly make some noise. Now, do I think they're going to beat the Cavaliers? No, I don't think that's going to happen, but um, that's just something I wanted my fans to be aware of. I wanted you guys to look out for that. Uh, Paul George, he wants to come back, and, uh, I mean, I can't be the one to tell him no. I mean, this is what he does for a living. It's basketball. He loves it. I'm pretty sure it's been driving him crazy, not being able to be out on the court and help his teammates, and, uh, he might be back soon, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, the NBA is a much more interesting place these days, and uh, it's going to be a fun ride to the playoffs. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, in the comment section, tell me, you know, your winners of the trade deadline. Tell me who your losers of the trade deadline are. Tell me, you know, trades that you like. Um, do you disagree or agree with me with something? You know, tell me who. And feel free to talk about the playoffs, too, because I, I tend to rant a lot when I get into these little talks. And I, I kind of got into the playoffs a lot in here. Tell me who you think, you know, does this give OKC a legit chance to actually come out and be like a, a, a seed in the finals, you know, and play the Cavaliers? Um, and even mention Paul George if you want to, you know, tell me what you think about PG. Should he hold out until next season? Um, personally, I really think he should, should just follow what his heart is saying. If his heart is saying that, you know, I don't know if I'm ready, then don't come back because I would much rather have a healthy Paul George for the rest of the, you know, his career than a banged up one. And um, <clears throat> if he is ready, then hell, I'm ready to see him ball too. You know, I miss Paul George. I miss these guys. You know, Carmelo's out for the season. I miss these superstars. So thank y'all for listening. And uh, yeah, tell me what you think.